everybody. I'm Rachel from Rachel Cooks with Love. I'm so happy to be back with you. I've been away for about a week because we just arrived in Texas. So my Ron and I left about a week ago and we were getting away from the cold weather in Ohio. We arrived here in Texas and it's cold, but it's not snowing and it is snowing in Ohio. So that's a good thing. Today, I'm gonna be making corn tortillas, tortillas de maiz. I have a good friend, viewer, who asked me to make corn tortillas. So let's get started. You know, corn tortillas can be the easiest thing and they can also be the hardest thing. They can be so easy once you get the hang of it and once you get practicing on it and you make them 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 times, you just get so good at it and then you say, oh my gosh, this is the easiest thing. I can't believe you're having trouble with them. But when you don't make corn tortillas and you're making them for the first time or your second or fourth, it can be a mess. I've had a lot of messes where I have to throw it away because I was too sticky, they would get real hard, they would crack or whatever but uh, I think I got it right so I'm gonna share that with you so let's get started with this now what I use is maseca but I like maseca in this gold bag see the gold part there's the other regular maseca and when I was in Ohio I couldn't find this one because this is the one I always used when I was in Texas and when I was in Ohio, I couldn't find this one, and I used the regular one in the other bag. And they turn out just fine. But, so why do I like this? Because it's got a different taste. And they're a little bit darker in color. But it's got a little bit of a different, a little more corny. And I really, my Ron really likes these. He's noticed the taste between those and these. And these are his favorite, so... I think that if you use the other ones and you like them, you use these and you like them, not a problem. You go with whatever works for you. So I'm not going to make that many today because I'm just going to make about nine, eight or so tortillas. But you can double it, triple it, whatever you want. So if you want to take notes on that, you can. I'm going to get one cup of the maseca. Now, the only reason I'm doing it like this is so that you can see it if you've never made them before. But after you get the hang of it, you're just going to, even if you go over this a little bit, it'll still turn out. But start with one cup like this. And then I, I would say about a fourth. So there it is, a cup and a fourth. Let's start with that. And then I poured some water in here nice and warm. It's not hot. You don't have to put any oil in here. You don't have to put any baking powder. You don't have to do any of that. At least I don't. If that's the way you're used to it and that's the way your mama told you or your neighbor told you, then do it. But I do nothing but water. Oh, and I add a little pinch of salt. So I'm going to add just a little pinch of salt. And when I say a pinch, I mean a pinch. Just a little bit like that. This is my little baby spoon that I use in my salt. So it's just maybe a fourth of a teaspoon. I mix it up really good like that. Now, I poured in a little bit more than a cup here. So I want like, uh, I was figuring that it would be like a cup and a fourth, maybe a little less. So here it is. I'm mixing in the salt really good, bringing it together. Remember, it's all about bringing it together, getting the flavors out. So I'm gonna start pouring the water in slowly, very slowly like this. A little bit more bringing it together bringing it together see just like that bringing it together really nicely you know when you make corn tortillas you don't want to overdo it with the water you don't want to go with too little water because then they'll be dry and they'll crack on you. If you put too much water, they're going to be very hard 
to use and spread in the tortilla press because it's going to be too wet. So you have to just take it slowly. What you want to do is you want to get it nice and wet. Bring it all in together really good. You see, and I've got about, about that fourth left. So, just trying to get the feel of it like this. And you want to knead it. Real, you want to make sure that it all comes together really good. So, it's important that you knead it real good because you don't want any dry spots or dry little patches. Because that's where your tortillas will be real dry and they'll crack. And you want to knead it real good like this, really bringing it in together. That. And as you knead it, you, in the beginning, you may say, well, you know what? It feels just right. And so you stop. No, you keep on kneading it. Because as you knead it, more and more, it starts to get a little bit drier. Then that's when you know that you add, need to add just a little bit more water. And I mean squirts, little squirts at a time. Don't go crazy and dump it all in there because then you'll have too much. And I think this is gonna be just perfect. I didn't even use the whole fourth. I used about a cup. So the texture that you want when you make this is kind of like, like modeling clay. You know, when you, we used to play with Play-Doh, that's kind of like the texture that you want. You don't want it too wet. You don't want it too dry. So then I'm gonna bring it all together. Just like this. Doesn't that look like clay? See? Look at that. Look. So, I'm going to make it into a little ball like this. Just like that. And I'm going to let it sit right there for a little while. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and cover it with saran wrap. You know, whatever you've got. Press and seal or saran wrap is good. Don't use a towel. Use a saran wrap towel. Like this. And I'm gonna let it sit like this for at least 30 minutes. Now I would like to let it sit for a little longer. A little longer. If you can prepare it and just put it in there like that and cover it for an hour or just 45 minutes, or an hour and a half, that's even better, because it gets real hydrated. It just comes together really good, but that doesn't mean it won't work with 30 minutes. So let's go with 30 minutes. It's been about 45 minutes. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of knead it together just a little bit, but I want for you to see the texture of it. When I told you it was like, Play-Doh, it's like Play-Doh. Look at that. See? Just like Play-Doh. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the little balls. And I just go by feel. 
But if your ball is a little bigger, it's a little smaller, it's all right. My balls are about the size of, I would say like, like a egg, like a little ping pong ball, a little bigger. I want to say, I want to measure them and all that for you, but just kind of have the egg or the ping pong ball in your mind. But you can make them as big as you want. Now, you don't want them real. I'm going to tell you that you don't want them real thin because if they're real thin, you run the risk of them, you know, tearing on you when you've got them on the tortilla press. And you don't want them real thick either unless you're making gorditas. Otherwise, you want them just to be out like that. See? Just like large eggs. See? Medium eggs. If you make it like a medium egg, try and make them all like medium eggs. If you make it like a big large egg, try and make them all like a large egg. Then after that, all you have to do is figure out is just how to uh, keep them all about the same. Now, what I like to do when I'm making it, I like to just kind of rub them like this. That's my kneading. Instead of kneading the whole ball and then making the little balls, I like to get a little bit at a time and kind of knead it like that. And then I make it into a ball like that. You see? And you kind of just, after a while, you kind of get the hang of it. Make them all like that. Here we are. See? I've got about nine balls ready and made. Ron says they're like pheasant eggs. Or he said, more like quail eggs. And I said, well, I've never seen a pheasant egg or a quail egg. So I'm going to go with just little, I don't know, ping pong? Something like that, or maybe a little bigger. Anyway, I'm keeping them hydrated. Here is my tortillera or my tortilla press. And I got these sheets of plastic. And I, as you can see, it was a hefty Ziploc bag. And I just cut it and made it into school oval. Not square, not oval. You get yourself a piece of plastic. Don't worry about what kind it is as long as it works for you. And and it'll work. So I got two pieces like this. One for the bottom and one for the top. So what I'm going to do, I've got my comal ready. My griddle here, it's nice and hot. And I've got it at about medium high. I have a griddle in Ohio that is long, but it's not cast iron. And I would have to put it all the way to high to use it. Whereas with cast iron, I go lower than high. So depending on what you're going to use. But I will tell you one thing. Make sure that it's hot. Not medium hot. Say, oh, that's too hot. They're going to burn. No, they need to be hot. We'll adjust it if we have to. So we're going to get one of the balls. We're going to put it right here. And you want to stay a little bit closer this way than, than this way. Because it'll get pressed flatter. So you want to go, a, not in the center, but a little bit that way. Like that. About right there. Then you put the plastic on top, maybe right there. Put the plastic on top and press it to about that size right here. See? Then just peel off the top just like this and then you just gently put it right there. And we're going to start timing about 30 seconds. So I'm going to go through it with you the whole time so that you can see. So I've got a clock behind my run and I can see the time. So we're going to go a full 30 seconds. If we go 35, that's even, that's fine. Not a big deal. And I'm going to go ahead and get one of my little flippers only because I don't want to mess up my, my polish or my fingers. So I'm going to use a flipper. You can do that unless you want to go for it. So we're going to go about 30 seconds. So then what we're going to do is we're going to flip it. And then we're going to leave it there for about a minute and a half. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit brown around there. You can see you start to get little specks of brown, a little, little specks of brown at the trim. That's when you know 
So it's going to be there about a minute and a half. So we'll just leave it like that. You know that I remember the tortillas when I made them the first time. I couldn't even take them off the plastic. I would try and take They were stuck. Or if I did, they were, you know, tear in half. They were too thin. And another reason why I wasn't able to get them off the plastic was because they were too wet. So those are the things that you need. To, that's why I say you want to get them like Play-Doh. Because if you get them like Play-Doh, it'll work out. And they'll come out just perfect. So you don't want them too wet. You don't want them too dry. So anyway, with time, made them again and threw them out and made them again and threw them out until I got them just right. And then from there on, you can do them with your eyes closed without a problem. And they'll be perfect every single time. So this is about a minute and a half. So I'm gonna flip them. And very gently, just give them a little tap like that. See how they're coming up? coming up and I've got my you want to keep them somewhere warm so I've got this this is my Laga burger basket and they work perfectly here but as long as they're warm for you you use whatever works for you see and they stay here for another maybe 30 seconds and then they're ready see now let's do another one Got your little ball, just like Play-Doh, see? You can press it, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to stay like a perfect ball. Then you put your plastic on there, close it up, about that size, remove the plastic. Count about 30 seconds. About 30 seconds like that. Got another one ready. Don't be afraid. The worst thing that can happen is they're too sticky or they break or whatever, you throw them away and start again. That's about 30 seconds. And then we count again for another minute and a half, more or less. If it's a minute and a half, a minute and 40 seconds, it's still gonna work out for you. But if you can kinda just, I'm timing it, I'm looking at the clock and I'm timing it, I'm trying to tell you the exact time so that you know, you'll remember that when you're making them. After that, it'll just be natural. You won't have to look at the clock. You won't have to be doing any of that. It'll just, it'll just come. But in the very beginning, it'll be that way. Anyway, I remember getting the whole ball of dough and throwing it away and starting again. And I would say, oh my gosh, what are they doing? Maybe I need to put some oil in there. Maybe I need to put some, you know, baking powder. Maybe I need to put some more water. Maybe, you know, I put salt and I shouldn't have. No, it was all in the timing. That's all it was. And you don't want to be flipping them around either. Don't be flipping them around because the more you flip them, the drier they get. So after it's been here about a minute and a half, we're probably going over three or four seconds. It's all right. Flip it over. Just give it a nice little tap in the middle and it'll come up. And that's good. Put them right there. And we want it there about 30 seconds.
so I would throw them away and start again, and I would ask questions. What did I do? How come it didn't want to puff up? How come they were too dry, you know? And somebody would say, oh, you know, you put too much water. Oh, you didn't put enough water. Oh, you needed to put baking soda. All kinds of stories. And I found out now that I make them almost daily, that it was just the timing and the texture. So it's been about 30 seconds. Now I'm gonna count for about a minute and a half. And so I remember thinking, well, maybe I need to have some baking powder. Oh, and another one is add a little bit of regular white flour, all purpose flour. Some would say, add a little bit of oil. You don't have to add any all-purpose flour, you don't have to add any oil, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is just make sure that you get the texture like, like modeling clay. Let them sit 30, 40 minutes before you make the balls, an hour, it doesn't matter. And then count your time, more or less, and you'll see that they will, that they will turn out. And you know my Ron and I, my Ron, and it's been about a minute, so I'm going to let it go another 30 seconds. My Ron and I eat these almost every day. You can make your dough. If I were to just make three or four tortillas, you can, you know, make your dough. You, the little balls, wrap them up in plastic. You can put them in the refrigerator, and they'll be good for three or four days. And you can just, tomorrow, you can put them in your tortilla press, and they'll be just ready to go really good so they keep very good in the refrigerator so now that it's been about a minute and a half I'm gonna flip it over give them a nice little tap there about 30 seconds and this one is ready see see how pretty they are put them right there and then I go ahead and do another one see how it doesn't stick Like that. Like that. 30 seconds. Let's let's go ahead and cook this one for an, we're gonna do 30 seconds. You know, I was talking to my sister sometime last year, and she said, you know, I made corn tortillas for the first time, and you know, I don't remember what she said, but I don't think she was real happy with them. So I thought about her today when I was going to make this video, and I thought, this is going to be for her. You know, maybe, hopefully it'll be helpful for her.
this is my last tortilla. I want to show you how pretty they look. Very hot. Well, I'm done with my tortillas. Now I'm going to serve one. See? See how nice and soft they are? See how pretty they are? And they are delicious. So I'm going to serve it with a meat dish that I fixed for lunch. I got leftovers. Make me a taquito like this. I'm going to put a little bit of onions. Like that. A little bit of cilantro that I love. And I'm going to put some hot salsa that I made today. See? Oh my gosh, so delicious, so perfect. If you like my corn tortillas, give me a thumbs up, send me a comment, a message, a request. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and thank you.